This is the third book in the Darkest Powers trilogy by Kelly Armstrong. Although we do not post intentional spoilers, the following synopsis and review may contain spoilers to previous books. Do not watch this review unless you have read The Summoning and the Awakening by Kelly Armstrong. My name is Chloe Saunders. I'm 15 and I would love to be normal. But normal is one thing I'm not. For one thing, I'm having these feelings for a certain antisocial werewolf and his sweet-tempered brother, who just happens to be a sorcerer. But between you and me, I'm leaning towards the werewolf. Not normal. My friends and I are also on the run from an evil corporation that wants to get rid of us, permanently. Definitely not normal. And finally, I'm a genetically altered necromancer who can raise the dead, rotting corpses and all, without even trying. As far away from normal as it gets. Hi guys, this is Jessica with Chapter Chicks, and I am doing a book review for you today. It is over The Reckoning by Kelly Armstrong. Now, I, um... I listened to the first two books of this on audiobook and I just want to say I do not recommend doing that because I, when I read this one I really really enjoyed it and I kind of didn't like the first two and I'm starting to think that was because I listened to them on audio. So I have nothing against audiobooks, just don't listen to these series on audiobooks. Okay? Well, now let's get started. This book was released April 1st of 2010 by HarperCollins. It, um... It is the third book in the Darkest Power series by Kelly Armstrong, and there are 391 pages in the U.S. hardcover. Okay, so with that being said, here is the beginning of the non-spoiler review. So, um, yeah, this book, it was so much better than the first ones, and then in another way, it was pretty bad. Um, I really, really, really loved the plot. I didn't find myself bored. I didn't find myself wanting to skip through to get to the end. In fact, I found myself wanting to skip through just to see what happens because I was so filled with anticipation that I wanted to know what was going to happen. And that's really good for a book, and a lot of books usually don't do that, but this one definitely did. And another thing, I really liked the characters in this book. And once again, I didn't like the characters in the first two books. And that could just be because of the audio, but the characters that used to seem so whiny are not whiny in this. And I don't know if that's because of the audio or if that's because um, they just grew as characters. But, I don't know, it was pretty sudden. I used to hate Derek. I hate him. Like I'm like, oh my god, this character is so annoying. But the second I read him with my own voice, um, I loved him. I am totally team Derek after reading this book and after reading his voice. And I don't even know why I like Simon. And I also don't think to or Tori is annoying either. And I used to think that Tori was really annoying. And I don't think Chloe's annoying anymore. So I really enjoyed the characters in this book. They, they grew a lot. And they had to go through a lot. And it points that out a couple times. And I really enjoyed that. Because it's like, oh yeah, you know. Chloe's not this little vulnerable girl anymore. She's grown up a lot. And another thing, I love these covers. I think they're so pretty. I love how they all match. I don't know if there's... They're all like... They are all different, but they match at the same time. So I love that. I think that's really cool. So I'm going to start talking about the things that I didn't like now because they are just as important as the things that I did like. I hated the end of this book. I don't know if... The questions that they didn't leave answered are going to be answered in the companion series. But there is a lot left unanswered to me, and I found that really annoying because I really wanted to know. And I don't really see how they can be answered in the companion series because they are very Chloe, Derek, Simon, Tori specific questions. And I don't know if they're going to make an appearance in the next book or what, but I know that this is the last book in Chloe's story because it is called the Darkest Powers Trilogy. And there's already three. This is the third one, so there's no more books coming out for her. Which I find, like, as I was reading it, I got to, like, here. And I'm like, how are they going to wrap this up in this many pages? And they don't. They, like, it totally feels like there is another book coming and there's not. And I found that really disappointing because I, it takes a lot to finish a whole series. Especially when you review books because you try to review so many different genres. You don't want to read vampire book after vampire book. You don't want to read um, 
werewolf book after the seven. You gotta, you gotta like vary it up. So it's really hard to finish a series. And when you finally do get to finish a series, you want it to be finished. You want it to have that satisfied, wrapped up feeling. And I didn't get that. I got that from the book. I felt that the book wrapped itself up nicely, but I don't think it was a very good series ender. And I know that will upset a lot of other people who read it. Okay, so now I'm going to start talking about the spoiler review. So do not watch anymore if you have not read The Reckoning by Kelly Armstrong. Okay, so one of the questions that didn't get answered for me, and it was kind of important, but it was kind of minute at the same time, was the necklace. And if you notice that the necklace is a different color on each book, it's red, then it goes blue, and now it's like this purplish pinkish color. Margaret in this book, um, a necromancer who comes and tries to teach Chloe things, talks about how those stones were used in like medieval times, like old olden days when it about necromancers. And um when they talk about how it changed colors, she's like, Oh hey, that can't be possible and it makes you want to know why it changes colors even more. And I don't see how that can be answered later about Chloe. Why hers changes colors. I guess it's because it's real or whatever. But that is not enough an ex enough of an explanation for me. Why does it change colors? You know what I mean? And I'm really happy about the fact that Derek and Chloe end up together. I really was Team Simon in the first one, but after reading Derek's voice for my own, I really, really liked him. So, and I really didn't like Simon at all. I thought he was kind of like, ugh. I don't know. And it was, I was really sad. I kind of, I teared up a little bit, even though I hated her so much. When Tori's mom died, I was so sad. And I was so glad when Simon's dad came back, Simon and Derek's dad, and how they're all going to end up together. And I totally think that if there was going to be another book in the series, Aunt Lauren and Mr. Day, I think is how you say it, Simon's dad, would end up together, like, totally. And it doesn't even... You find out in this one, as you should know, because you should have read this already, you find out that Tori and Simon are related because Tori's mom um, had a baby with Simon's dad against Simon's dad's will, will, but still, nevertheless, they're brother and sister. And it just doesn't end. It doesn't ever tell Tori that. So how do you have a book where it doesn't tell the main character this huge thing about them and then have the series end. There has to be more Chloe, Derek, Simon, and Tori in this knockoff series. And I just, it doesn't really seem like a companion series then. It seems like it'd be a fourth book. But it's not because it's about somebody else. And I'm just so confused about it. I just don't know. But um, another thing I thought was really cool, and that just ended and nothing happened, Tori, or. Er, Chloe finally let the demi-demon go from the first one in the Lyle house. There's this demi-demon, as you guys should know, that's like nagging at her, trying to get her to set her free. And she finally does that. And her boss, I guess Lucifer, I don't know, comes and takes her away. Takes the demi-demon away. And the demi-demon says, hey, I'll see you later. Oh, how are you going to see me later, demi-demon, when there's no more books? I just don't know. I just don't know. There's just so much left unanswered in this book. And I didn't like that at all. I thought that more should have been answered because it's the last book. But I did really like Chloe in this book way more than I liked um, Chloe in the last couple books. So that's good. And I don't really want to say too much else because I want... I, I don't really know much, <coughs> much else to talk about. It's all just pretty much basic, awesome characters, good plot, all that good stuff. I was pretty disappointed with the ending, pretty disappointed with the way things weren't answered. So that's why this book got a B, because it didn't answer anything, it just left more questions. And yeah. So, definitely check this book out, just definitely check the series out. But, yeah. That's it, that's all I gotta say. I am Jessica with Chapter Chicks. This is my review over The Reckoning by Kelly Armstrong, and this chapter was for you. Thanks for watching.